Hey everybody, my name is Mr. Kite. This is the Lab 207 webcast. Thank you for joining us today for our discussion of carbon. Now, as always, I want to start you out with some objectives so you know what I need you to know by the end of this broadcast. So there are four of them. Watch them. They're falling from the top. First one, list the most common elements found in living organisms. The second objective, explain why carbon is a very versatile element. Third, describe a hydrocarbon. Fourth, watch it now. Compare and contrast the three types of isomers. Now, stick with me. We're probably going to have this done in about five minutes. So here we go. So our first objective was to talk about the elements necessary to life, and they are as follows. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now, quick little acronym to remember this by. Take those first letters, and they spell CHOMPS. Now, recognize that's not CHOMPS with an M, that's CHOMPS with an N, but we depend on these elements for our daily life. Almost every living thing is built up using these six elements. So obviously without them we wouldn't exist. Remember them, you're going to need them, you'll probably see them on your AP test. Today we are going to focus on one of those elements, carbon. So let's go ahead and get on into talking about carbon and what it is. But first we're going to talk about organic chemistry. What is organic chemistry other than the weed out class of your Coming biological major. If you survive OCHEM, you're going to make it the rest of the way through your major. That's my little piece of advice to you. Anyway, organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry that studies molecules that contain the element carbon. Generally, it also deals with molecules that contain carbon and were once either part of a living organism or are used by a living organism, but that's not a hard and fast distinction. So just remember, organic chemistry deals with molecules that contain the element carbon. Now, let's talk about that element of carbon and what makes it unique. It's really very simple. You got carbon. If you think back to your chemistry class and Bohr models, we know that carbon has got six electrons around it. In its first shell, first energy shell, it's got two little electrons. That means that in its outer valence shell, it has got four free electrons. Now these free electrons, they're not happy. All electrons like to be paired up like this guy, kind of like high schoolers. All you want to be paired up with a guy or a girl, these electrons are the same way. They don't want to be by themselves. So because carbon is trying to get all of its free electrons hooked up, it's going to form bonds with just about anything and everything. That means that this carbon, it can bond to one, two, three, four different atoms. Because it's got those four open docking stations, carbon can form almost infinite arrays of molecules, structures, and each of those molecules and structures is going to have a different form. You can get chains, you can get things that have got like a zigzag backbone, sometimes it forms up into rings. There's no telling how many shapes you can form using a carbon backbone. So just remember, the reason that carbon is so versatile is that it can form four bonds with other atoms. Now, let's talk about hydrocarbons. Um, hydrocarbons are kind of the base when it comes to carbon containing molecules. They are molecules that contain mostly carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes an oxygen is thrown in there, but usually they're carbon and hydrogen. Now, these are very interesting molecules because they are very good at storing energy. They're high energy. Um, we know carbon, or we know hydrocarbons as the carbohydrates that we eat every day, but you also know them as the gasoline that you put in your car. Our body burns hydrocarbons to get the energy to keep us alive. Our cars burn petroleum hydrocarbons in order to run. So just remember, hydrocarbons are molecules made out of carbon and hydrogen, and they are very good at storing energy. Now, we're going to get on into the crux of our discussion today, which is about isomers. Isomers are something that you're going to talk a lot about when you do get to that organic chemistry class, but I'm going to give you the basics today. Um, essentially, they are a variation in the architecture of a molecule. So this means that you could have two molecules with the exact same chemical formula, but they could be shaped completely differently, which means that they're also probably going to have different chemical properties. Now, there are three different types of isomers. They are as follows. You first have got a structural isomer, 
there are geometric isomers and there are enantiomers. Let's close our little session off today by talking about each one of those individually. First one, a structural isomer. Very simple. It's a different covalent arrangement of atoms. Now, if we look at our two atoms or our two molecules that we got going on here, here's number one, here's number two. Both of these have got the same chemical formula. You've got three C's, so that would be C3. You have one, two, three, four, five, six H's, so C3, H6, O3. But if you look at these two, you can tell that they are shaped differently. Their atoms have a different arrangement in space. They both have got a carbon backbone, and they both have got hydrogens arranged around them. But look at this oxygen right here. In the first molecule, our oxygen's right here in the middle. In the second one, he's kicked out here. Even that subtle little difference in structure can give a vastly different function to our molecule. So remember, this is a structural isomer, same chemical formula, different covalent arrangement of atoms. They are bonded to different things. Now, our second isomer that we're going to talk about is a geometric isomer. Now, these guys have got the same covalent bonds. They are different from structural. If you look back at the structural isomers, their atoms are attached to different carbons. In this case, the atoms are attached to the same carbons, but they are, have a different arrangement in space. So if we look at these two right here, here's molecule number one, here's molecule number two. In the middle, we have got a double bond, which means that these two carbons are sharing four electrons between them. Look at the way our two methane molecules are arranged. In this first one, the two methanes are on the same side of the double bond, and in this case, they are across from each other, kind of catty corner. And same thing for the hydrogen, same side, catty corner from each other. Now these have names. When everything is lined up on the same side, it is known as a cis isomer, that is cis, C-I-S. When they are catty corner from each other, it is trans. All right, pretty easy. The way I remember this is cis are sisters. They're right next to each other. Now, interesting case, vision. Our vision depends on rhodopsin. Rhodopsin only works if it switches back and forth between its cis form and its trans form. One version, well, actually, no, let me back that up and say the switching between the cis and the trans form is the reason that we are able to see. So. A simple little change like rotating around that double bond enables us to have vision. Kind of cool. Now, our last isomer of the day is the enantiomer. Enantiomer are mirror Im images on an asymmetrical carbon. So let's talk about this word right here, asymmetrical. Sorry for that line. An asymmetrical carbon is a carbon that has got four different atoms bonded, it, bonded to it. So if you look at this carbon right here, None of its four bonds are the same. Each one has something different hanging off of it. And you can think of these guys as being mirror images. So right here, they're showing you a mirror. Same, this guy is a mirror of that one. This one is mirrored to that one. And this one is mirrored to that one. Now they might look like they are exactly the same, but there is no possible way that you could take this molecule and set it exactly on this one. You, if you pick this guy up, and put it right on top of it. The purple would match with purple, orange would match with orange, but the blue would land on top of that one, and the white would land on top of that one. It's kind of like your right and left hands. If you put them together like this on top of each other, they don't fit. It doesn't work. Sorry if I just blocked out my camera. But these guys are, they look the same, but they're not quite the same. And it is a really interesting case. Um, there was a drug called thalidomide, and one form of it, the D form, helped out with morning sickness. The L form caused birth defects. So both forms were used, but initially they didn't realize that just a simple thing like having one antimer, in antimer or the other could give you a birth defect or it could cure your morning sickness. So that is your quick summary of carbon for the day. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed your time with us in Lab 207, and we'll see you again. Thank you.